At first I was afraid. I was petrified. <laughs> but then I realized I could live with or without you, and I'm good as hell. So take a bow, because these boots are made for walking on to part two of the great pop culture debate's best breakup songs ever. I'm your host, Eric Resniak, joined again by my panelists, Carissa Kloss, Kate Reculia, and Kevin Dillon. Did you listen to part one of the episode? No? Oh my god, you never listen to anything I say to you. This is why we're breaking up. But seriously, head to greatpopculturedebate.com and listen to that before we head into our Sweet 16 matchups. Grab your tissues and your Ben and Jerry's. On we go. I know, I kind of have whiplash. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you. First up, we have With or Without You by U2 versus Torn by Natalie and Bruglia. Kevin, I'm going to have you support uh, U2. Yeah, I mean, I... I'm actually a huge U2 fan, which not a lot of people know that about me. Um, Their most recent albums kind of lost me a little bit, but uh, the 80s, 90s, 2000s U2 are are iconic. And this song really is is them. And this song represents so many different things. In round one, we kind of talked about it with the Americans and the finale. Spoiler alert a little bit. It's the show's over, so deal with it. (laughs) But it's about the the Jennings who are spies with the USSR and them breaking up with their country. Are they Soviets? Are they Americans? Who are they? And then it's also, I talked a little bit uh, about this in round one. It also showed up as in Friends um, in the iconic breakup of Ross and Rachel. This song really transcends what it means to break up with or understand what it means to like leave something behind. Um, and, and the lyrics really just speak so powerfully to that, it, you know, see the stone set in your eyes, see the thorn twisting your side, I'll wait for you. You know, like there's this really emotional power to the lyrics. And, you know, I think we said this also a little bit in round one, the way Bono, I'm not, a, I don't have a huge proclivity to male voices either, but this song has such a powerful vocal note that it hits, that it really breaks your heart. So it really allows you to find this to be your personal breakup song. It's one of the few like more emotional songs that I love on this list. Um, And I think it really defines a breakup. That's so you made a lot of great points. Um, You also made a point, and I think Kate made this too, that it could be broadly applied to many things, not just a romantic end. It could be the end of a period in your life, moving away from a city, like all of that's true. Whereas Torn by Natalie Imbruglia, which I'm going to speak about, is laser focused. Torn is a song about a young woman who is completely destroyed by a shitty guy and she is just trying to figure out how to go on. And that's why I love it. Like as as much as you 2 and this song is iconic for its time period, you could not be a teenager in their fields in the 1990s and sure have porn come on the radio now in 2020 and be like, oh my God, it's torn. Like, seriously, it is so evocative of teen angst. I'm going to come at you with that one a little bit because yes, in that era, you could not forget it if you grew up in that era. With or Without You has lasted. That song, enough people have watched Friends and know that song, and that's still part of young folks' repertoire from the late 80s to today. I think Torn is a by-forgotten one-hit wonder that people, yeah, it's talked about, yeah, it's a presence, but it's not as popular or as commonly played as U2's With or Without You. I bet you if you looked at like billboard charts. And I bet if you looked at sales and things like that with or without you would hands down beat the pulp out of torn. I will, I will agree with you that with or without you has a timelessness to it. Whereas torn is very much a time capsule. It is that period, very narrow focus, but I think it does what it does really brilliantly. And if we're looking at breakup songs, to me, it is a breakup song first and foremost and it does that great. I'm going to put it to vote. Uh, Carissa, where do you come down on this? Torn, but because of the, because when I hear that song, I immediately put myself at 16, driving home from my part time shitty grocery store job late at night and belting it out in my car. So emotional resonance. Nothing's right. I'm torn. <laughs> uh, Kate, what about you? This is incredibly hard. Torn is a perfect one hit wonder. Like, perfect. Like, 
outrageously perfect song. And the lyrics. It's also a remake. Is it really? Is it? it is it a remake. Matter. So folks, this isn't <laughs> the first time it was sang. So you all are voting for a remake of a song. You don't know what I'm voting for. <laughs> <laughs> But I just, it's so, the emotions of it are so, and again, I'm sure this is because like it was on when I was a teenager, but like the best, it's like the song is amazing. The song is amazing. And then at the end you get that. Mm, yes. You get, it's like the best, like four stupid notes ever. Yeah. Make your choice. My choice is torn. I am going to flip the script and I'm actually moving to with or without you. <laughs> Now you know how it feels. My reasoning is that Torn is a great breakup song. With or without you is a great U2 song. Yeah. And that was the argument I was trying to make. But I actually feel like Kevin's argument is more compelling. Mm. Um, I uh, I love Torn. I just defended it. And I, I believe every word I just you said. You did. But I think Kevin actually persuaded me. And, <laughs> and uh, I'm going with, with or without you. Thank you. You got it. Um, so that means, Carissa and Kay, are you sticking with Torn? I'm actually being persuaded to I am go too. with, with or I am without too. you. I think yes, Kevin's too. case for cultural re- resonance, um, yep. especially with friends, which I fully admit I forgot about. Um, yeah, that's an excellent point. The moment is also iconic, even in a way, because Rachel makes the radio station stop playing the song. Because it's so painful because she tells them what Ross did. And he doesn't deserve to have that great breakup song played. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's an iconic moment. Again, 10 points for pettiness. So, yeah. Um, So it sounds like we're advancing with or without you. Yep. Next up, we have Careless Whisper by George Michael versus Go Your Own Way by Fleetwood Mac. Kate, why don't you go with uh, Fleetwood Mac first? I mean, I really think that Carissa made an unbelievable argument. (laughs) round that you know that this is an instance of two musicians going through a breakup one of them writing a petty petty passive aggressive song that then becomes a monster hit and you know stevie nicks has to deal with that for the rest of her professional life but you know what i can't i can't argue this song over carol's whisper so i don't know i might i might just need to recuse myself here (laughs) That's the thing is I, I agree with all of the arguments that Chris made in round one. I think they were actually very salient and um, persuaded me to be okay with it moving forward. But at first I did not have it advancing, but I'm just going to say this in your mind right now, you can hear the saxophone opening to careless whisper. Not only can you hear it with absolute clarity, it immediately puts you into the mood. Whoa, whoa. And you're just like, Oh God, I'm a shitty person. I've been cheating on someone. Oh. Like, Eric, you, you don't know what my limbic system is doing. Right <laughs> instantly evocative. Like we use the term iconic a lot, literally iconic, literally and iconic. Within those like five seconds, I think you have it to me. Go your own way is great. Don't get me wrong. And again, live for passive aggressive, <laughs> fucking over your, not only fucking over your your partner, ex-partner in that moment by writing the song, fucking them over in perpetuity by <laughs> making them play it with you right in, in front of them, like shaking their ass. Fucking great. But careless <laughs> whisper. I think the world could be greatly improved if we had scorching saxophone solos in almost every song. This to me is like among the top three. And I think it is a great breakup song because it is from the point of view of the person who fucked up and knows they fucked up and they're not looking to be forgiven. They, they want to like, again, it's that musical masochism, just like Cher. So I, I argue that it needs to be uh careless whisper kevin where are you voting neither of these songs really appeal to me um but i guess careless whisper yeah careless whisper that would be my all right carissa yeah the saxophone kate (laughs) (laughs) that's my answer Please don't sue me, Ghost of George Michael. Um, Also, uh, I just typed Carless Whisper, which is what the commuters in Boston deal with every day, dealing with the red line. Okay. Next, we have Someone Like You by Adele versus Survivor by Destiny's Child. I advocated for Survivor last round, and I, uh, Carissa, do you want to speak on Survivor? 
I will. I don't know really what else to say because I think you did a great job. I think it's basically, it's it's one of those like after the fact songs. So it's not like I'm going to move on and it's going to be great. It's I have moved on and it is great. And you thought all this shit that was going to happen was going to happen and it did not. And it's basically like the, the Phoenix song, right? Like rising mm-hmm. from the flames. I'm going to make it because you know, you've already made it. You've made it out through this. You know, you walked out of those flames. You were after a long night of hooking. That's <laughs> so, right. They are blessed and highly flavored. They are living their best lives. Crystallized. Mm, yes. Yes. Amazing. So Kevin, do you want to speak to someone like you? Yeah. I was, actually <laughs> just, I was just looking. I would love to speak about someone like me. <laughs> Uh, you can find the ad on Craigslist. Oh, that's right. (laughs) Farmersonly.com. Uh, OnlyFans. Check out my OnlyFans. Um, There you go. Someone like you has 800 million, almost 800 million listens on Spotify. Jesus Christ. God damn. (laughs) Yeah. With that said, I think, I think, I think the points that I made in round one about this song is for me, the the 2010s decade was a pretty male heavy decade um, in terms of like billboards and what was on the radio. The one person who seemed to cut through the two people who cut through that really were Rihanna and Adele um, and on, on a billboard it. single side and then yeah. Taylor a little bit. But Adele's power um, when it comes to breakups really is, she is the main event. She is... I think our mo- she and Taylor are our modern breakup people. I'm guessing we're going to get an Adele breakup album of her marriage soon. She is that person. And someone like you, I know it's not everyone's favorite because I feel like it was, it was a little overplayed. It was, but I think it resonated with people. And like I said, you will, you can walk through a quad on a college campus and hear a sad person listening to it. If you ever so lightly push your ears against dorm windows. I mean, it (laughs) is that song. And just to compare, uh, Survivor only has, um, has 230 million and Survivor has been out for a much, much longer time. Now, there are some reasons that might exist, but I my vote is Adele. It's just ever present. It's iconic. Uh, so, Kate, where do you come down on this? You know, this is really, I think I actually have to come down on the survivor side. Interesting, because I, I've switched my vote again to Adele. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, in terms of the, I do. Ter- I do have to come down on the survivor side, because again, like I... As a piece of music, I don't necessarily, I don't love it lyrically, but like it is it message wise. I love it message wise. And it is sort of like campy and and fun. And I just see them crawling out of their their shipwreck on the beach, right? Like when TRL was the thing, because that's how old I am. And and I, that is a precious memory. So yes, I choose Survivor. <laughs> I, I am arguing in favor of someone like you. Again, it's not my favorite Adele song, but it seems crazy to me that we don't have Adele in the, uh, it would be seem crazy that she's not in the top eight, first of all. Um, and, and secondly, I think that um, it is a better song than Survivor, as, as I think everyone has pointed out. And I think it is incredibly evocative. I, I championed Survivor in the first round, and I don't regret it. But to me, in terms of better breakup song, I think it goes to Adele. Carissa, where are you? So I think I initially had Survivor here, but looking at the lyrics of someone like you... Th- it's basically like the nicer version of you ought to know, which we yep. haven't talked about yet because we're saving it, you know, yep. but, but it really is like, it's, it's the nicer, like sweeter, kind of sadder, like less angry version, but it's the same thing. And so there's no one, no one going down on anyone in a theater in it. <laughs> right. We, don't, we do not know her life. Let's no, not don't. make assumptions. <laughs> right. Um, so does that mean a vote for someone like you? Yes. I I'm changing to Adele. Okay. Uh, So, Kate, I'm afraid that means that Survivor is out of here. That's okay. I respect. All right. Next, we have Those Boots Are Made for Walking by Nancy Sinatra versus Nothing Compares to You by Sinead O'Connor. Kate, I'm going to have you talk about Sinead O'Connor, and then I think I'm going to put it to a vote because I think we've covered Boots pretty extensively. Kate, go for it. 
This song, I thought it was interesting that this song was in the original matchup with the Gautier song because they're both like iconic one hit wonders that have a very particular sound. And it's not that they aren't both artists in their own right and have like interesting back catalogs and stuff, but like people know Sinead O'Connor from Nothing Compares to You. It is a piercing song. The quality of her voice, the production, that kind of Enya E, oh, like that stuff in the background, it's really. Like you heard this on the radio and you stopped and you listened to it. Um, you can hear Prince in it too, you know, not like it, it, in terms of the the way that um, she sings it. She definitely sounds like herself, but there are certain like little Prince like inflections in it, um, which I think only magnifies its power. And it also like is connected to her performance on SNL. And that is you know, ripping up a picture of the Pope is some real big breakup energy. Like, <laughs> it like, sure is. Woo! It's a whole mood. It's a whole <laughs> mood. Wow. So, so yeah, it is. And, and it is another one of those songs that every time you listen to it, you know, regardless of like where you stand on her, her, like, you know, her politics. Her, her politics. Yes. Thank you. It is a, just a really beautiful haunting song. Does anybody want to defend Boots Are Made for Walking? Or uh, personally, to me, this is, I, I, again, love Boots, defended it heavily in round one. This is not even a contest to me. In terms of breakup songs, this is, uh, I could listen to this song over and over again and never get sick of it. And that's saying something because it's a sad, slow song, but it is perfection. Uh, Kevin, where are you here? Um, I think I had boots advancing but i think i could eat this in a fancy restaurant and um, <laughs> I could uh carissa where are you i'm with i i think we need to have at least some uh prince representation here true so, very yes. good point god. Made. god and personally i want to live in a world where someone like you versus no- nothing compares to you is in the yes. that's a yep. fucking throwdown. Yep. So we are advancing. Nothing compares to you. Next, we have I Will Survive by Gloria Gaynor versus I Will Always Love You by Dolly Parton. And Carissa, I want you to go first here with defending Dolly. So, I mean, it's it's a little unfair. I don't know. Because everybody loves Dolly. But also, Whitney covered this song, too. And so can we can we separate the versions? Can we put them together? Do we talk about this song as a whole? I don't how do you want me to do this? Awesome question. So the reason just so the uh, people at home know, the reason we did not include the Whitney version is because we decided one song per artist. And for Whitney, it was decided where do broken hearts go was the better option, which did not make the the 32 bracket. Um and since Dolly Parton wrote I Will Always Love You, people thought it was more appropriate for this to be the contender. In this case, I'm going to make a decision that will be controversial, but I Woo! think you can talk about the song by both of them. And I think it makes it a stronger contender because arguably, I think if I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston was on here, it would have been a number one seed. I agree. Um, <laughs> I don't know that I make your decision, but I will allow it. <laughs> That's fine. That's fine. <laughs> so just talking about the lyrics, you know, the the song is very, it's very heartfelt. It, the two performances that we're talking about, both of these songstresses can, can belt. Like how many of us alone in your car tried to do that long I that just sounds <laughs> terrible. Like when I do it, it's awful. Um, <laughs> but we were all doing it. We were all trying. Because this song is just like, it's just so like, I'm just taking my memories with, and I'm always going to love you. It's very much like the, don't cry. It's not you. It's me. You know, I'm moving on, but I want us to be okay. And I'm and taking those experiences, you know, moving forward, but saying they still had value. Um, it, there's a lot here. And I think it's it's a good, it's a sad breakup song. And it's like a, let's try and be on good terms breakup song. It's a very mature breakup song. Very mature. To me, it is very, it's the same energy as the Bonnie Ray. I Can't Make You Love Me. It is a mm-hmm. well-written song performed beautifully without frills. It is, I am sharing my story with you. Yep. Um, on the other side of the spectrum, we have a song that is all about frills. Mm-hmm. And it is 
<laughs> not only am I going to be okay, it is I'm going to be fucking great. So uh, this is one of those contests where I think your mileage is going to vary depending on number one. Uh, actually, I don't think straight men have a horse in this race, right? Like we're going to set you aside. But right. you, if you are a woman who has been done wrong, if you are a gay man, full stop, you are going to go with I Will Survive Here because this is part of your DNA. This is a song that um, is as much as I will always love you is a classic, whether it's the Dolly or Whitney version, I will survive is like crystallized. It is baked in to every homosexual man when they come out of the womb. It's an anthem. Absolutely. And um, it is, I mean, Gloria has a complicated history with the gays, whatever. Yes. I'm going to set that aside. But I will say that like, it doesn't matter if you are a 19 year old gay, if you are a 72 year old gay, this song is still, it's going to be like, yes, I'm here. I am present. I am having my moment. It is a critically important song for, and, and I know I'm focusing on the gay stuff. That's just my personal experience. But I think for anyone like ladies talk to me, I have to imagine that you have also been like, okay, Gloria, take me away. It is like musical Calgon. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I feel like it also, you know, if you, if you want to boil down what is what is the purpose, what is the utility of music when you are hurting, right? When you are going through a breakup, it is to not feel alone and to somehow remind yourself that you will survive. Right. <laughs> so like it is the most like perfect encapsulation. It is all about frills. Like you said, it's extra. It's extra. Um, but it is also just like the most clear statement of like this thing that has happened to me will not be the end of me. Yeah. Well, and it and it reinforces, you know, I I got all my life to live and I got all my love to give. Like I you did not exhaust my supply of those things. You know, I still have them and I can still move forward and and have all of that. Exactly. So go on now, go. Get out the door. Don't turn around now cuz you're not welcome, not welcome anymore. anymore. Like <laughs> you can't yep. like I, to me, it's undeniable. Nothing but love and respect to Dolly. Anyone who knows me understands how much I love and appreciate Dolly Parton on a like cellular level. Mm -hmm. But in this particular contest, I have to go with Gloria. Kevin, where are you? Oh, Gloria Gaynor. Absolutely. Hands down. And I, Kate, what a I was just going to say the Dolly version of I Will Always Love You. I actually enjoy that more than the Whitney version. That's controversial. Same. Yeah. That's no, I'm agree I agree. Okay, good. Because I think the Whitney songs that are better on the Bodyguard album are like Run to You and things like that. Oh, like, Run better. to You. Oh, God, so many <laughs> good so songs. Better. We will do a Whitney one. <gasps> we will do a Whitney <gasps> one. A we must idea. do a Whitney one. But uh, Kate, where are you? Uh, I am also surviving. Um, and I agree. I, th I like the Dolly version better. I think partially just like I was at an age where Whitney's version was just played. Played. Yeah played and did it did the song a disservice which is an incredible song but yeah i will survive is just again we say this word a lot but it's iconic yeah. <laughs> i wish i had a drink i would take a drink every time we said that i should get <laughs> <laughs> there you go there's your drinking game everybody mm -hmm. iconic take a sip and carissa are you gonna stick with i will always love you or are you switching i had i believe i didn't even have that in the bracket yeah i'm definitely i will survive i think this is this is an iconic well, <laughs> you did a lovely job, a lovely job defending Dolly and the song, Gail. So thank you for that. I'll take a bow. Take a bow. <laughs> uh, I can't. Next, we have I Can't Make You Love Me by Bonnie Ray versus Don't Speak My No Doubt, a really odd condition. Chris, I'm going to have you speak again <laughs> about Bonnie Ray. <sighs> I mean, I think I don't really know what else to say on top of what Kate had presented in her initial uh, advocacy for this because it really is um, forecasting of what it's like to be to to be or I guess to have an unrequited love or relationship and it's it's hard and there's a desperation there and you can hear it in her voice her voice is beautiful and this again I think of Bonnie Raitt as a country artist and this is what they do you know like female country breakup songs are so good and so heartfelt and so it definitely deserves to be here um I don't know that I think it's a better breakup song than don't speak though so you take yeah. it I can hear that. I also think I and I will probably get yelled at for this in the comments, but Thank you. being being alive 
in the time when this was out, I was like probably an early teen, maybe earlier that, like between the years of 10 to 14. But I feel like this song also kind of changed music. I'm not sure if there was anything else that was out there in mainstream pop. There wasn't country for sure, but this crossed over into mainstream pop. And I feel like it kind of changed. And I wonder if we had songwriters like Jewel being yeah. coming along the line if we didn't have this song really breaking through in a very big way that there was an appetite for this kind of confessional you mean bonnie intimate. Raitt? I th- yes yeah yeah it you was 1991 though with no doubt like and oh scott, and scott and scott totally like, like it's totally. they both have these like very like influential sounds that really took music to very special places absolutely and um like i was definitely a teenager i was the target audience for no doubt when it came out and i distinctly remember when their first song just a girl came out thinking to myself Ugh, this is going to be a one-hit wonder we'll never hear from these people again i literally remember thinking that in media play when i saw the album media and play. then media yeah. play <laughs> um and then we actually got tragic kingdom and i was like oh fuck that this pe- these people are amazing and like i've been fully on board with them but they did they changed music right we had that whole ska renaissance in the 90s and they were a huge part of that um I don't know if Don't Speak is necessarily a part of... I don't think of that as much as a ska song, as much as I just think of it as a modern pop rock song. It's a great breakup song. It song's very different than a lot of the other stuff on the album, though, because it doesn't have that... Yeah. It doesn't have the horns, you know? It has the, the like, Spanish yep. guitar. Um, it's, yep. it's really plaintive, you know? Like, it's got a little bit of a beat to it and stuff, but it, what she's saying and the way that she's singing it is really raw. There's a lot of emotion here in a different way than in the rest of the songs on that album. For sure. Um, I'm going to put it to a vote. So, Kevin, where are you on this? No doubt. Uh, No doubt, it's no doubt? No doubt, it's no doubt. (laughs) Carissa, where are you? I'm with no doubt. Kate? Oh, I'm with Bonnie. All the way to the end. She was my number one. (laughs) Oh, man, this is hard. This is really hard. I think I'm going to go with don't speak. I'm sorry, Kate. It's okay. You're wrong. (laughs) That's right. That's fine. And... (laughs) I can't make you love me if you don't. So uh, yeah. I, I can't make you love the song if you don't. So I, I do love it. This is very much a, a Sophie's choice situation. And I think a lot of these are um, wait till we get to the Hilly dates. So Ooh. the next one, I'm not even going to put up to discussion yet because we haven't talked about you want to know by Alanis Morissette. We did talk quite a bit about good as hell, but I'm just going to put it to a vote before we have any debate here. Kate, where are you on this? On, on which one? On you want to know versus good as hell. Oh, you want to know. I want you and I know. Carissa. <laughs> Alanis, 100%. Kevin. Eric, you ought to know my answer. Why? I know. <laughs> so we are going to save the discussion of Alanis until next round. But uh, sorry, Lizzo, we love you. But yes, uh, we do. you ought to know is. She's yeah. good as hell. Yeah, she sure is. And finally, for the Sweet Sixteens, if I could turn back time by Cher versus Ain't No Sunshine Bill, Bill, Bill Withers, I also would like to go right to a vote on this one. We haven't talked about Ain't No Sunshine. I'm glad it's on this list. I don't think we have any others that are by a black male artist on this list. It's a wonderful song. It was a number two seed, which shocked me. Very popular. Very popular. It, it That is, we've talked about like straight male, I don't really care. And that is a, a big reason why, frankly, I'm like, cool. But like, um, it is the straight male breakup song, right? Like, oh, she's out of here and I'm gone. But compared to If I Could Turn Back Time, I'm sorry. It doesn't even hold a candle <laughs> to me. So go ahead, Kate. Where, where are you on this? Oh, I'm I'm turning back time. I'm getting those stars. I'm giving them all to you. If only I could. Carissa? <laughs> Well, I was with a uh, one word songstress Robin, and so I will go with one word songstress Cher here. And Kevin, I do I need to ask? You do not. My fishnets are fully, fully on. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the fishnets, and the fishnets were ripped. Were ripped. <laughs> All right. So. We're down to the Elite Eight, and we're just going to plow right on through, folks. Uh, speaking of fish nets that were ripped. So, in the battle of With or Without You versus Careless Whisper, Kate, where do you come down? Oh, my God. Why are you trying to hurt me? <laughs> yeah. I'm hurting you because it's a breakup song. Okay, bracket. You know what? I have to... I have to give it to Careless Whisper. It wins by a sax. It wins by a sax. Uh, Carissa... I'm going to go with you too, actually. Yes. I yes. Knew Ke- I, Kevin, I'm sure you're going with With or Without You. I am going with With or Without You. Uh, I'm sticking with Careless Whisper. And so oh. which one has the higher seed here? Careless Whisper. Yes. And 
according to Eric rules, my vote also counts twice in ties. So no matter which way you slice it, homie, Careless Whisper advances to the final four. Oh, never going to dance again. I would honestly, both of those, both of those were excellent choices. It's, it's a good matchup. I, again, I'm going to just say this. I think we're going a little schmaltzy with Careless Whisper, but you know, it's okay. I don't think With or Without You is dramatically less schmaltzy. It's just got more testosterone. I, that's why I like it. <laughs> I kind of feel like the best YouTube breakup song is All I Want Is You. Yes! Um, from yes. A- from the end of Reality Bites. And it's, yeah. Yep. So, hard hard agree on that, Carissa. All the promises we make slash break from the cradle to the grave when all, all I yes, want is you. Yes, and All I Want Is You. And that, like, like the, the cello at the end. Ugh. That song's like eight minutes long. <laughs> it truly is. also i will say this i'm not advancing you two as uh revenge for downloading that fucking album onto my <laughs> iphone without my permission that i have deleted like 10 times and it keeps coming back that was fucking terrible uh, musical herpes it will not go away no it keeps coming back i was like i don't want any of this <laughs> Stop. Your intense energy is making me feel bombarded, Bono. All right. So next we have someone like you versus nothing compares to you. This is fucking rough. Um, I'm going to start with Carissa here. I'm going to go with Sinead just because the song has been around longer. It's got more staying power and we have the Prince songwriting. Like it's, it's, it's amazing. All right, Kevin, where are you? This is a tough one. I, I'm going to go with Adele. And the reason I'm going to go with Adele is because I just don't hear people. I don't think that nothing compares to you has, I think in our minds, we all grew up around the time of this song. So it's an ever present song for us in many ways. I don't think anyone born past 2000 talks about this song. I hate to break it to, you guys like but i don't i don't care about them they're wrong they they just don't know what they don't know Uh, but that (laughs) is a pop culture they are they matter they matter gen y matters but isn't the the job of this podcast is to walk children through nature Nature. you know that is part of it that is part of it but if they haven't claimed if they haven't claimed it yet i don't think they're gonna claim it now i don't i just don't think it's I don't think it's last. I think it's a great song. I think it deserves to go as far as it's gone, but I don't think it is. I don't think it was a breakup anthem after the two thousands. I just don't. I don't think people were listening to it. I don't. It's a, it's a compelling argument. Kate, where are you on this? Nothing compares to you. Nothing. Wow. Nothing. So it's funny (laughs) going into this. I was team Sinead, but I feel as though, we have had some really great arguments about Adele and I've gone back and forth and back and forth on this. And he, where I'm, I'm struck is we are doing this at a, a moment in time too. And right now Adele is the queen of breakup music or one of the queens of breakup music. Whereas Sinead O'Connor is ostensibly a one hit wonder. If we are looking at it from a timelessness standpoint, which one is going to be more timeless in 20 years? We have no idea. In 20 years, people may feel about Adele the same way that we feel about Sinead O'Connor. However, Adele also has a much deeper feel, field of music. But the question then becomes, is any of that relevant? Because we're talking about the songs themselves and which one is an objectively better song. And if I'm talking about the better song here, I think some some uh, nothing compares to you as a better song. Agree. I disagree. I don't, I think you guys are leaning into this schmult. Like I know they're both schmaltzy, but oh, like, yeah. <laughs> I don't, think no, I don't think nothing. Can, I don't Prince wrote it and I'm not demeaning Prince cause I adore Prince, but I don't think nothing compares to you. I don't, I don't know. It doesn't really lift. We've talked about overcoming breakups and things like that. Mm-hmm. Nothing compares to you. Just makes me want to walk, like do a like edible that makes me sit in my couch and wallow. But I think both of those songs do that. Both of them in this valid response. Yep, it is. Both of these do that here. Uh, I, I, I just, I, nothing compares to you is just not a great song to me in my book. But if you guys move it forward, then it moves forward. Yeah, you're going to hate the entire left side of that bracket, buddy. So. <laughs> I don't like Sarah Swiffer, and I don't like nothing compares That's to you. That's right. You do not have a, a, a horse in this race. Okay, I you're sure advancing. Don't. Nothing, 
Nothing appears to you as advancing. Uh, I think both songs are bad. There you go. Uh, I will survive versus don't speak. Uh, I'm going to go to Kevin first. I will survive. All right, Kate. I will survive. Carissa. I will survive. All right. So we're interested. Oh, oh, let me finish this first, and then we'll we'll get into this. Uh, and then finally, you ought to know versus if I could turn back time. It is a, a harder battle, but now I do want to open up discussion to you. Ought to know because we haven't talked about it yet, and I want to start with Kate. What to say about this song? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, in the way that like this song just like came into my life when I don't know, whenever it came out, I was like 14 or 15. And like you just 95. Yeah, it was 15. You sort of accept. You're like, oh, oh, this is a gift. Like this feels right. And then in hindsight, you realize like, wow, I was so lucky to be a teenage girl in the 1990s when women were just tons of agency, tons of varied emotions, tons of confessional, tons of I am writing and playing my own music and I am allowed to feel things that are not pretty. I am allowed to talk about freaking blowing Dave Coulier in a theater. It's Dave Coulier, right? It's totally Dave Coulier. (laughs) Allegedly. I mean, allegedly, allegedly. And like, and ask if he can feel it when I scratch someone else's back during sex. Like, that is just so... It's not just any sex. It's revenge sex. It's revenge sex. Like, and, and it's also just such a great song. It's such a... She gets, like, you know, kind of elevated for, like, her, like, oh, she was so angry. She actually, Alanis is this, like, kind of golden goddess, I feel like, in my mind. Like, she's not just angry. She has all these emotions, right? But she was allowed to be angry on the radio and gave so many people, myself included, male and female, permission to be fucking pissed about things that had been done to us or that we had been promised and had been taken away and that we weren't going to be quiet about it. And I just think that as breakup energy is so essential because it's clarifying, it's empowering, it's human. And I love it. Amen to all of that. And Kevin brings up a great point that the the range for people on this podcast are, Kevin, when were you born? I was born in 84. 84. And I'm the oldest by far at 78. So um, we are coming at this. And I I suspect every single person on this podcast will agree with me when I say that this song was a moment for us in our teen development that was, um, you knew it. Like when you heard the song for the first time, I can clearly picture myself in the broken Naugahyde electric (laughs) recliner in my parents' home. Watching this video on MTV with its oversaturated colors yes. and mm-hmm. her loose color, like all up in the camera. Mm-hmm. And at that moment, and I would have been, let's see, 95. So I would have been like 16 or so knowing like, oh, this is like a, a pivot. Like this is very new, this energy. And strong women weren't new in music, right? Like we'd been living already with, with uh, Madonna and Cindy Lauper and many others, but this was different. Um, and the anger was definitely a part of it, but it was just a part of it, as Kate pointed out. So for us, I think this song resonates in a way that is really special. And it won't for people who are under the age of 30 or over the age of 45 50 they'll be like yeah it's a good song i like it but like why are you getting so excited about it i have to say because of the this panel i suspect that's why we are so well go on kevin what you're saying is a good point because honestly this is the same song as you're so vain except it's less me yes yes Mm -hmm. in the same song as someone like you but but less sweet yeah right they're all kind of very they all fall in the similar vein which is why when we get to it my argument for the other song that should win is going to be there um but i i do think that this song your is is or you're so vain did make the voting list but it didn't make this bracket and i probably would guess is because of who the age range of people who were voting absolutely we yeah. had a little bit of an mm-hmm. older audience voting online i'm shocked because the average Facebook user is now like 50. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, it's very seen. It's very interesting. I mean, because this is a great song. It really is. And I, I'm glad it's got a number one seed. It deserves it. It's a fantastic breakup song. And the Broadway musical is bringing it back to life. So that's great. So uh, between you ought to know, and if I could turn back time, Kevin, where do you come down? I voted for Turn Back Time because it's more relevant to me, but I think you ought to know is the deserving winner. 
And Carissa? Alanis, 100%. She was she was so ahead of her time. For sure. And Kate, I'm assuming we know the answer. I, got, I love her Canadian energy. I love it. Absolutely. <laughs> Canadian bacon, honey. So we have a final four of Careless Whisper versus Nothing Compares to You, the schmaltz side of the bracket, versus I Will Survive versus You Wanna Know, which apparently turned into the go fuck yourself side of the bracket. <laughs> and I love that we have this balance because this was one of the kind of issues we had with this topic which is so broad how do you interpret these songs as a best and i love that we ultimately come down to these two situations where you have to pick a side and to that effect careless whisper versus nothing compares to you kate where do you come down this is incredibly difficult careless whisper carissa i'm with kate careless whisper kevin do you even give a shit (laughs) i do i do i I shouldn't say that I don't like either of these songs. I'm being peppermint petty. (laughs) (laughs) Peppermint petty. That's amazing. I would say I argued against this when it was up against someone like you, but I think more people have an, I would say this, between the two of these songs, more people actually probably have an emotional connection and nothing compares to you. And of these two songs, I think that is the much better written song. Um, So I'm going nothing compares to you. I actually think everything you just said is true, and yet I'm still going to go with Careless Whisper. Nice. Um, you guys pick the worst song. It's a breakup. We're emotional. We're emotional. Get over it. Let me have my feelings. Oh, go eat um, a rocky road. Yes. <laughs> Gladly. Um, but here, as I always say to people when they get upset about the, the choice that makes final two, I'm like, don't be mad about it. It's going to make your final choice an easier victory. So it's fine. Uh, I will survive versus you ought to know. I'm going to start with Kevin. Uh, I will survive. I, I get why people are going to outvote me on this, but let's be honest. I will survive is a literal anthem across generations, across all ages. You can both dance to it. You can get excited to it. And don't tell me you can dance to you ought to know. You can't dance to it. Sorry, folks. I would I would never say you could. No, you can't. Okay, <laughs> just put that out there. But you can mosh. That's not good. <laughs> That, that's not that thing. That's no. I Will Survive is an anthem. And I get you could say the same thing about You Ought to Know because it is very powerful. But I think I Will Survive has spanned the 70s, 80s, 90s, 2000s, 10s. It is an empowering song about getting through. And it is also a fuck you to someone and saying like, I survived. I don't need you. And it's a nicer way to say it. And it's more fun. Carissa. Alanis, I think she, it encapsulates the feeling and her being like, refusing to go away saying, you know, I'm, does she know about the mess that you left that you gave to me? And also, does she know how you told me you'd hold me until you died, but you're still alive? Like, talk about peppermint petty, you know, <laughs> just like, like, and she refuses to go away. She's so in your face about it. She's like, I'm not going anywhere. And I see that you've moved on, but apparently the things that you say aren't worth, but you know what you're saying. It, it's just so great. I just, Atlanta's all the way, all the way. Kate. Oh boy. This is, I honestly would be thrilled with either of these going on to the final. I mean, I would too. But I, my personal preference is Gloria Gaynor. Yeah. And and I think in some ways, my personal preference, I'm going to split this, which is like the hottest places in hell are, desert, are reserved for people like me. <laughs> um, my personal preference, the song that means the most to me is uh, You Ought to Know. But best breakup song, I cannot not choose I Will Survive. It is It is the song that I think if you said to someone breakup song, they think of that song, right? And so for that reason, I will say Gloria Gaynor. I think all of the arguments that have been made on this one are so spot on. And it is a really hard choice because they're both so good. And I hate that we have to debate them. But that's literally what we're doing. So I have to say, I tend when we started this, I was like, oh, you ought to know is going to win it. And I was surprised, although it was a number one seed. Gloria Gaynor was actually the one that has the most overall votes from the initial poll. And it was by a wide margin. It was significantly the most popular choice. And I think it does speak to multiple generations, as Kevin said. I think You Ought to Know is a better written song. I think, as Carissa pointed out, the lyrics are scorching. They are brilliant. They are right there in your face. Also, as Carissa pointed out, as she was making the argument, I was like, you know, 
this sounds like a mental illness. <laughs> <laughs> right? It's like stalkery. You know? Yes, it like, is. I refuse to go away. I'm around to remind you. And she's having revenge sex, but only thinking about this guy. Like, it's not healthy. No. And as a teenager, this never occurred to me. Oh. And as a teenager, I was like, yeah, you get it, girl. But now as a 40-something, where I'm just like, you know, that's not healthy. You should, like, eat a Klondike bar and call a therapist. <laughs> yeah. Because, like, he changed his mind and that's okay. Like, <laughs> he wasn't, he did, like, he said these things to you, but, like, you can change your mind. and That doesn't make you a bad person. Like, Eric, so, I love this argument. It's <laughs> how logical of you. Right? So, for all of these reasons, um, as much as I am a diehard Atlantis fan, and, and I am so happy that the stage show is bringing this one back. By the way, if you see it on Broadway, and you should see it on Broadway, um, everyone I know who's seen it, including myself, this song ends with a standing ovation for yep. the entire mm. theater that goes on for like 10 mm. minutes. And it's well worth it because the delivery is spectacular. Um, but I'm advancing. I will survive. I'm sorry, Carissa. You yes. should be. I am. <laughs> Every time I scratch my nails, Eric. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine. But um, you I love it. you guys so much. <laughs> you don't want to be feeling what I feel in bed. So um, moving on <laughs> to a final two of Careless Whisper versus I Will Survive. Kate, where do you come down? I got I to gotta give it to I Will Survive. I got to do it. Carissa. Gloria Gaynor. Yeah, disco. <laughs> Kevin. I will survive, baby. And that's going to make it unanimous. Of I Will Survive mm-hmm. by Gloria Gaynor is our unanimous pick for best breakup song. Woo! I hope this was as cathartic for you as it was grueling for us. Do you agree with our decisions? Do you want to write an angsty live journal post about all the ways we disappointed you? <laughs> Go for it. Head over to greatpopculturedebate.com and vent your spleens. And while you're there, make sure to suggest topics for us to debate in the future and vote on the topics that have already been suggested. I want to thank my panel for their always insightful and funny commentary. I want to thank everybody who suggested songs and took part of the poll. And thank you for listening. Now go out there, keep breaking hearts, and have the best day ever. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye.